Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about breathing, particularly as it pertains to Taiji, Taiji Tran and what's going on with our breath and what are we trying to do with it? So the at, at the most fundamental level, breathing is pretty simple. It's something that you've been doing a long time and uh, doesn't require a whole lot of conscious thought to keep it going. And um, breathing is a very binary process. You're either inhaling, you're exhaling. And uh, then you can also add in the holding of the breath. So that's, that's I guess that's another, another step there. But uh, uh, the effect that, that this has on you is, uh, is important to look at. And um, even though it's happening at a pre-conscious level, that is, it's not doesn't necessarily involve your conscious mind to make this happen, uh, it's something that your conscious mind can get involved in and you can control your breath. You can start change and stop your breath. And admittedly, you want to, you know, the for how long and and when is that's going to vary from individual to individual, but the uh, that capacity is there in, in all of us. In fact, it's it's one of the most fundamental things that humans can do to to use the mind to control the body. Every three year old throwing a tantrum has that you know, has that capacity to, to stop breathing for a finite period of time. And it's something that we can cultivate and develop as we, you know, as we get to a more refined uh, relationship with the body. So, um, I mean, recently, I don't know if you, people who've seen uh, the Avatar, The Way of Water, there's a, um, uh, Kate Winslet did something really remarkable there and that she she was doing it shooting an underwater scene and required her to hold her breath it was for seven minutes and 15 seconds which is you know phenomenal I'm sure before she decided to shoot that that film before she signed on for that she had never done it longer than a minute but it was you know the uh, there there she was she's able to do it for you know seven minutes and 15 seconds and also not just sitting in a in a uh, in a stationary position she's moving around so the um, we have a an ability to to exert conscious control over the breath that is far exceeds what most of us consider to be a comfortable and be possible and uh, so we kind of oh and what that does requires, you know, what you're talking about, you know, it requires a conscious override of the, of the, that, that fear response that says, I must breathe now. And uh, you, you, your conscious mind, your will says, no, we, we, we're cool. We're going to go a little longer here. I know this is uncomfortable body, but we're going to keep going. And, and as we do that, we start to change our concept of what else is possible. So we have this, um, this relationship to breath, which is, like I say, it's, it's happening at that pre-conscious level, even while you're asleep, but you have the capacity to, to change its pattern to control it in order to create certain effects. And at the really the simplest level, when you inhale, you're not only are you creating an opportunity for your body to get more oxygen, which then goes to your all the little cells and, and makes them happy and productive. And when you exhale, you get rid of carbon dioxide and waste products, and, and that makes the cells very happy too. But uh, something happens with your autonomic nervous system, which is, I think, really important with regard to, uh, to Tai Chi. And that is, whenever you inhale, you 
activate the sympathetic nervous system. And that's the, that's the young part of the, the nervous, the autonomic nervous system. It's the part that says, do. And it's, it's, it, it spurs us to activity and it, amongst other things, but it's, uh, it, it's what is activated whenever we are doing anything. The sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system is the being side. So we got the doing and we got the being side, which is your, yeah, they, they call the parasympathetic the rest and digest part. It's just basically it's where, where you are in, you are just moving into a state of non-doing, a, a wu-wei condition where you're, you're just being. And the, the, uh, the sympathetic nervous is more of a wei wu-wei kind of thing where you're do and, and do based in not doing. So there's that, that nice, easy, uh, relationship between the two. We get this pulse of yin and yang with each breath. Now, what happens in most of our, our conscious activities is we are stressing the do, do, do part much more than the BBB part. So it, we tend to over accentuate the sympathetic nervous system, which then causes whatever goes tips over the over the line, then it creates this kind of stress response and, and we start getting antsy and then it has a negative effect uh, on, on the body mind it causes it triggers sort of a fight flight freeze response sometimes. And it creates all kinds of hormonal imbalances and things like that. So the ideal situation in Tai Chi is get that nice easy seesaw effect between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic where each is given its due and the correct breathing it depends on what it is you want to accomplish with your breath so if you are looking to as uh, for some medicine to calm your stuff down then you want to kind of tip it in the direction of the parasympathetic. And so then your little more emphasis is on the exhale, a little more mental focus is on the exhale. And so then that actually allows things to calm down quite a bit. And if you want to activate, you want to get yourself more excited, you, you, you know, there's more of a, a focus on the inhale. So we can uh, play with that for a moment here, just take a take a moment and um, um, we're just gonna focus on the inhale. So I'd like to inhale for a count of three and then hold your breath for a count of three and just feel the effect that that has on the sympathetic nervous system. Feel the, the, the yang energy that gets generated by that, that inhale. So just, uh, just breathe through your nose and hold and exhale. And let's do that again. And as you, as you inhale, just notice the effects it's having on your body. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. So notice that there, there is an effect there that you, you get from, from that, that it has a tendency to charge up the system. It creates a young, expansive kind of, kind of quality, which is cool. And, uh, and it's half of the half the equation. The other side, the parasympathetic on the exhale. So we're going to focus on the exhale part for a count of three and then hold for a count of three and just feel into that. And exhale.
old. And inhale. And exhale. Hold. And inhale. So notice a different effect. There's a, we're moving more toward passivity whenever we're focusing on the parasympathetic. There's more toward just, just into a state of being rather than a doing. So if you're, if you're ready, you know, put me in coach, you know, there's a, you know, you're, you're, you're breathing. There's a, there's an intense kind of conscious focus, young breathing that, that gets you psyched up to, to go in. If you're looking to, uh, I'm going to sleep tonight and I want to relax. Then you focus more on that, on the exhale. And you can even, just hold a little longer and just kind of allow yourself to, it calms down the whole system. It reduces your heart rate and everything just kind of gets very quiet. So one of the things that I like to do and, and I do many times a day is, is a little breathing exercise to balance these, these two out. And that is to breathe for an in inhale for a count of three, hold for a count of three, exhale for a count of three, hold for a count of three, repeat. And uh, do that for like 10 breaths and just watch the effect that that has on your nervous system whenever you're, you're doing that. So let's just do that right now. Just, uh, and I'm not going to, talk a lot through it, use, use your own pace in terms of counting, but uh, we'll just go through like 10 breaths and just see what that, see what that feels like.
Okay. So naturally you can make the counts as long as you like. It don't have to be for one second. They can be, you know, your, your one, two, threes can last any, any length of time you want. The key is that you're, you're creating a, a, a balance in the yin and the yang in your autonomic nervous system, which once you have your center line, then you can say, okay, I want more yang or I want more yin. And you, you get, by regulating your breath, you can change that energy. But uh, I'd like to see how, how, how that went for people. That, uh, was, that, was that helpful? Was that interesting? Did, uh, how'd that feel? <laughs> wow. um, oh, I thought you had something to say. No, was, <laughs> I'll go. That was just I'm clicking it for you. <laughs> um, I realized that um, generally when I do this kind of exercise, I only hold on the in-breath and not on the out-breath, right? And mm -hmm. I know how to hold my breath. I don't ha know how to hold my not breath, right? So I was finding myself being a little bit agitated about the not inhaling again after exhaling, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, air, need air, need air. <laughs> So, um, which of course I didn't, I was, you know, I had air um, somewhere in there or I didn't need it right away. But I, I was not in that short period able to let go of that. I was getting closer to letting go and it, go of it at the very end, but I, I wasn't able to let go of that. That's great. Thank you. That, uh, that's something which I've observed that most people do not hold the, the exhale. They they you know, they they'll hold the inhale, but they won't hold the exhale, and that's uh that changes the dynamic quite a bit. Jonathan, yeah, it's 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 not even just not holding it; you don't even allow the full exhale. It's like that breath comes in, you know, as Lynn was saying, you're hey, where is it? I need it. I want it, and it comes in perhaps sooner than it needs to be if the parasympathetic. I mean, I'm assuming one of the lessons from this is our parents sympathetic could use a little more love here, but allowing, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, we don't, we don't need much coaching on the inhale. We got that right. As Lynn was right. saying, I'm good on that, but, but it's really helpful to uh, play with identifying it as a parasympathetic is very, very helpful. It's not just this waste material, exhale, get, get out of here. You know, it's, it's like, no <laughs> parasympathetic come in and nurture. You know, that's a, that's a very, very, very good insight. Beautiful. That. That. Thank you. That's very, very well put. I appreciate, appreciate that. Sharon. Um, well, this is something I've been practicing for quite a while. And I still don't like <laughs> holding at the exhale. No matter how much I practice it, I still don't like it. And I can do it. But it's still, I'd rather not. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it requires, oh, you know, it requires us to, uh, to, to, to go to a dark place, actually. You know, it's, it's, it's something where, you know, it's, it's like, oh, absence. <laughs> it's, there's, where there's a void there. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. Let's put some stuff in that. And uh, have so, you yeah. found the beauty in that, Rick? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I've, I've come to, you know, prefer it, you know, this is something that I do probably every night as I'm going to sleep. And I generally, you know, I fall asleep within, you know, within a minute of hit my head hitting the pillow. You know, I, I, I never get to 10, you know, in, ins and outs. I just, you know, I, you know, you know. so it, 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 for me, it, it, by emphasizing that, that holding, it's like it, and part of it's my familiarity with that. You, you learn to control your parasympathetic nervous system, which is something that 
you know, my doctor friend says that's impossible, but, <laughs> but here we are, you know, <laughs> uh, Richard, you had something? Well, uh, we, we talked about this or something similar to this. Now it's been quite some time, at least a year ago, right? Uh, maybe two years ago. And it, it came close in time to when Sharon and I had had a little experience with Wim Hof's uh, breathing practices. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. My brother John and his wife Irene uh, are advocates of Wim Hof's process. Um, they think it's been revolutionary for them. But um, that's when I started paying uh, more attention to this. And um, the simplest thing that you can do is simply exhale a little bit longer than you inhale. That almost immediately will calm you down. Um, and then as you put other uh, paces in it, it does even more. Of course, holding the exhale is what takes practice to hold the exhale for any length of time because you do get that panic, need oxygen feeling. Sure. Um, but I find that the, I mean, it's remarkable to me that it's so simple to simply exhale like inhale for a count of three and exhale for a count of five. Uh, and that almost immediately will uh, sure. start to tune you down. Sure. Uh, so it couldn't, it couldn't be, there couldn't be anything more simple than that. And I too do this uh, when I go to bed as I'm trying, as I'm uh, trying to go to sleep and it, I too fall asleep uh, much more quickly than I ever used to. And probably sleep sounder too because of it. Right. right. So I have done it that way, Richard, the exhaling longer. But I find this is this is exponentially different, right? Yes. Yeah, a, holding your exhale is the, is very different. Yeah. And Rick, I wanted to ask, because when you inhale, you stop, but you're full right and and when you exhale do you just like sort of stop exhaling and you're empty is that the space in which you're sitting okay. yeah okay. yeah i mean empty ish i don't think you're yeah. ever fully empty or fully full you know right. and I, th I think you kind of use a 70 percent principle on that and you know so you're not straining anything and you're just able to you know you're 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 not making a, a whole uh, a stressful uh, item of it. Nick. Yeah. So when I first started doing breathing things like this, the I actually had a problem fully exhaling, and it's related to that wanting to turn the breath around before you actually empty out thing. And I just wondered if anybody else experienced that. It took it it took conscious effort to really fully exhale that first when I first started doing sure. this. Absolutely. For me too. You know, it requires, it requires some practice to, to learn to control your breath, to be able to uh, regulate that. But it's really a foundational kind of thing in terms of that body-mind interface. Whenever we use the mind to interface with the body in that way, it activates the superconscious and so you can, you know that's why it's it's so useful for meditation is because you're you're able to shift into a superconscious state you're able to get that body mind spirit integration and then enables you to 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 open up to other ways of of knowing than just in your thinking mind yeah jonathan yeah, I, I mean, speaking of meditation, I, I know I shared this at Sedona a few years ago. For those who, who put their palms on their thighs when they sit in meditation, you know, you're, any movement that's breath oriented is, is allowed, right? You're not fidgeting. And, you know, when you breathe in, you know, your hands ride up, your thigh, it rides up towards your waist, your hands. And then as you exhale, your hands ride down on your thigh. And it's like, if you want the ride to go a little farther, that helps that sense of the exhale going a little longer. I like to think of it as like being at the beach where the inhale is like a wave coming in and the exhale, you know, when you stand on the beach 
and you think the water's going out, but then there's like a few more and the little pebbles hit you. And there's something even more that comes in that going out. So I find it very helpful to, uh, insofar as when I do put my hands on my thighs, to use that ride to assist mm -hmm. the inhale, exhale. Nice. Nice. Good. Okay, so that's our, our foundation. It's just having that awareness of, of the yin and the yang of breath. And that, that there is a physiological correlate to what we abstractly call yin and yang, you know, the expansiveness or the contractingness of whatever. And so, but if we bring that into Taiji Tran and Taiji Tran movements, um, we can use it as, a, I think I find it useful to, uh, you know, and, and how you're going to regulate your breath when you're going to inhale and exhale in any movement. And since people watching this video are doing a hundred different kinds of forms, then there is no one set way. But the, I think this principle is applicable in, in whatever you're doing, regardless of it, you know, Tai Chi Chi Qigong, but even just anything you're doing, there's that if you are, if I'm inhaling and expanding, then there is more yang expansive chi filling up my frame. If I'm, as I'm in that shape, then there's a tendency to move more to the yin side. That is more toward the being side. And this is more the doing side. And if in our Taiji Tran form, we have this pulse of yin and yang going on there. And Oftentimes, depending on the form you do, but oftentimes there, there's more yin than yang in, in that. That is, there's more, hmm, more being, gathering, and less of the, hmm, the, the punches and the kicks and things like that, the sweeps and whatnot. And so the uh, uh, breaking down each movement and, and seeing where we can coordinate that with our the breath with the body movements is useful. Now, uh, I, you know, I, I came up through the William C.C. C. Chen school and that um, he did something that, that a lot of Tai Chi teachers don't do. And that is he emphasizes that on the expansions that there, there is an in-breath and that on the the yin or contractive movements that there is, oh, there is an, an out breath. And so that has influenced me and it's kind of taking that as my foundation because I found it very effective that I know that if I inhale and extend a ward off, then it's stronger than if I extend my ward off and exhale because then it actually, it's very easy to collapse someone's structure if they're exhaling. And so it, uh, uh, taking that as my foundation there, said, okay, so what else is going on here? And this is something I've talked about in, in these classes before, going back a year or more, but the idea of coordinating the breath with the qua. That is, if you are releasing the quad that is spiraling down and your the energy is moving down toward the earth you know and uh, uh and more of a releasing quality then there is that's an exhale and if there is a you're actually energizing and turning so making the distinction between the spiraling down and the turning then that's more of an inhale that's because it's, it's, it's a young uh, energy uh, involved with that. There's more expansiveness in that. And that expansiveness is felt throughout the whole body. And as any time you're talking about yin and yang, it's like you have to really narrow down specifically what is yin and what is yang in a specific context because there's always, there's yin and yang in anything and you can 
you can get lost in the weeds pretty quickly there. But in terms of the uh, uh, Taiji movement, if we can correlate the yin with the kwa, and I think I have found that it has a very profound effect on one's movements. And uh, it also takes your the body, mind, spirit connection to a much deeper level. So we move beyond just the ability to, to control one's breath. And we're saying, okay, control one's breath and let's do tricks with it too. And so let's uh, stand up and um, we'll go through, uh, we'll go through uh, some simple movements with that. So let's begin by uh, getting our three pillars in. Nice place to start on any of these things. Feel the balls of your feet, set your knees. We're not gonna do a, a whole long thing on this, but just get that, really establish your central equilibrium, reach with the crown of your head and tuck in your chin, open the jade pillow gate. Feel yourself sinking into the earth at the same time, reaching up with the crown of your head. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop, your coccyx to point down toward the earth and allow your pelvis to level out. And you'll find that your knees are unlocked so there you'll, you'll feel that you'll feel the, uh, the a change there in, in your legs whenever that happens. Point your index fingers and feel your energetic coherence. Reach with your elbows and open the shoulder joints. And spiral down to the left, spiral down to the right. Really release the qua. You want to really feel sun qua. So, so now we got the three pillars in. You've got the central equilibrium, energetic coherence, and we've unkinked the hose, at least in the major spots. Uh, let's just do that that four part uh, breathing exercise. We just say inhale for a count of three, hold for a count of three, exhale for a count of three. Hold for a count of three. Notice as you exhale and hold, feel yourself sinking even more into the earth. As you inhale, feel that expansion. Let's take a, a, a simple movement. We'll do it a few times just to, to get there. We're gonna isolate what's happening with the, uh, with the qua on, on, on that movement. So let's say, let's take a, um, let's just take like a ward off posture. And uh, going into, Ward off going into a, a very simple rollback. So if you're um, 
would start here and get it go into the uh, into the 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 ward off posture. So feel the ball of your left foot, set the left knee, and release the spiral down with the with the, the left quad. You're, you're spiraling down there, and as you do that, you're exhaling. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee and spiral down and continue to exhale. So you're loading up that right quad, exhale, relax. And then as you're inhaling, you reach with the elbow, you reach with the wrist and turn and you're expanding. Inhale and yang energy. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the quad, you're exhaling, releasing down. And then turn and inhale. As you reach out and expand. And then exhale. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down into the left or the right quad, spiraling down to the left, exhaling. Getting very comfortable with the absence of breath and then inhale. And ward off. Exhale, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Exhaling and then inhale, turn and reach out, opening. Inhale. And exhale. Spiraling down. And here is a good place to practice it. exhale and then empty. You're into the, the B and conserve, store up and then inhale. And hold and feel that, feel that expansiveness and then exhale into the left leg, spiraling to the right, spiraling up, feeling the release of the quad and then feel that emptiness. And then inhale. Exhale, spiral down to the left, floating up the right quad. Feel the emptiness and inhale. Exhale. And inhale. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Let's go to the other side. Same idea. Feel the left ball, set the left knee. Spiral down to the right and then exhale. And then inhale. Exhale, spiral down to the left. Empty out. Inhale. Fill up. Exhale, empty out. Inhale. Hold, feel that expansiveness. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. 
exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. down, step in, step up brother, you just feel into your body right now, and notice the energy. I take an opportunity here to just see if your breath has loosened up a bit. And that is if it's easier to say empty out and hold that. And you just really feel into the emptiness. Step in, take a deep breath, close, empty out. Great. Take a seat, please. Hmm. How was that? Good. Karen. Well, when I practiced only doing like 70% on the exhale and holding it, <clears throat> it was quite lovely. Oh, before good. I, before I was really trying to empty out and hold. Mm -hmm. And there was so much more ease and grace in doing it only 70%. Great. And I think we, we find it that 70% changes the actual volume changes the more you get comfortable with it that that 70 percent now is different than 70 percent after you've been practicing in a while and it's like it, it it's still 70 percent but your capacity and your comfort in 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 what you're able to uh to do with your breath is it changes richard you had something i just sorry I was just thinking that um, uh, when when we learn to hold our breath, like when we learn to hold our breath underwater, we try to fill our lungs as much as we can and then hold our breath as long as we can. And it seems as though if you're really being trained to hold your breath, that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to hold your breath when you've emptied out, but not completely. So I, I think it might be might, might be both. I think you, you start with with uh, 
with a full tank and then you gradually let it out. Right. And just was- as Sharon was saying, when I was trying to uh, trying to increase the time at which I could go uh, without breathing, I realized also that it was better for me not to completely empty. If I didn't completely empty, like she said, and you had said, if I just emptied about 70%, I can stay, I can keep my breath still for a bit much longer than if I'd emptied it completely out. Right. Um, so it's, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of intricate stuff going on here. Uh, yeah, give, the, the whole idea of breath control becomes you know, very confusing and, and uh, uh, frustrating for a lot of people because they, they, they're doing exactly what you're saying. They're like, they, you right. know, and, and there's so much effort that goes into that, that you, uh, you never, <laughs> you, you, you can't do very long. It's just the, the effort is becomes uncomfortable. Right. And I think that we learn, uh, you know, when we're trying to do uh, any acts of strength, you know, as we're learning and beginning to do that, we, hold our breath like this you know and that's not the way to do it either you learn that you need to keep breathing through exertion um so there are a lot of there are a lot of things that are counterintuitive when you're trying to learn to breathe properly <laughs> because of yeah. the way we the way we've learned um, right uh william chen had a very uh, interesting observation about about actually using your breath, like say for, to lift a weight, say I'm gonna lift a heavy, you do a heavy deadlift, right? So the, you know, he, he said, you know, you, you fill up and then as you, you let go of some of the breath and then you compress, use your, uh, your diaphragm to compress down and, and you're, you still have some breath in there, you're not emptied out completely and you're not full up completely. You're, but there's, you know, you have this, this condensed ball of air that you're using as your, as your center. And that gives your body the integration to be able to accomplish more than you could if you're either all the way inhaled, all the way exhale. So it's a, and I, I found that, uh, that useful. And I think, does, is it, I, I sort of feel that, um, I guess it's not true of everyone, but I think a lot of people are chronically short breathed, shallow breathers. Um, so just right. learning to take a good, a good full breath is a challenge for a lot of people. Right. Yeah, Lynn. I found this much easier to do with the form than simply sitting, right? Um, partly, I think, because we've had the conversation and maybe subconsciously I was only going for 70. I wasn't consciously going for 70, but also because I felt like my body was more integrated into the process, right? Instead of just sitting there, it was act active, you know, yeah. in a way that made it all more one for me. Yeah. Yeah. And do, do you generally inhale to expand and exhale to withdraw or contract? No, you generally inhale with yang and exhale with yang. <laughs> yes, the yang, the expansive. Right. So in, in simplest terms, that, that, is, that is accurate. And then you can, uh, you can modify according to situations. But I think the, uh, that is, you know, that's your your foundation and then you take it from there and you know and you know the observation that most people breathe very shallowly is 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 observable that's something you can you can see and something that most of us here have trained for decades to overcome and by using the diaphragm and what happens with the uh, at the pre-conscious level the, the diaphragm presses down it bumps up against the internal organs and there's a signal that's sent to the nervous system that says, ah, you, uh, you, know, you have to expand the chest now. And that's something that is, uh, you know, that, that, that's a, a pre-conscious response. And so what we're 
doing when we're breathing diaphragmatically is we're ignoring that that preconscious response to expand your chest and say no no keep breathing down and even though it's a little uncomfortable to push down on your guts with your diaphragm uh it is <clears throat> someday you're going to thank me for this you're you're expanding your 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 capacity to intake air two to three times by by doing that so then you're no longer just breathing chest breathing which stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and you're moving into the pushing down on the on the on the on the internal organs which then is going to activate the parasympathetic effect of the vagus nerve because that's the the yin pole of the vagus nerve is down there in your lower abdomen down with your dantian so as you breathe down and then you're feeling down into that you actually feel your your lower abdomen feel the pressure on that then it will cause the parasympathetic effect of the vagus nerve to activate and uh it it calms your stuff down and allows for order to be restored in the kingdom so it uh then that uh, then the the mind gets out of it's like oh my god where's my next breath going to come from i better gulp it down fast you know and goes into like eh don't worry about it there's 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 more where that came from and and it's a whole different shift in in our nervous system it takes us out of that anxiety of where's my next breath coming from into like no no i got plenty i'll find i'll find it it's it's out there somewhere any other thoughts okay jonathan you have some you're on mute you're on mute do you have a thought on uh, left nostril, right nostril? You know, that a lot of pranayama alternates. Yeah. Sure. So that's a, uh, that's a, another technique for sympathetic nervous, uh, uh, sympathetic parasympathetic. Uh, so the, uh, was it the Pingala and the, uh, the Shashamna is the center channel, Pingala, Ida, and then mm. Pingala. You know, so the uh, you have a I forget which one is which, but one is yin, one is yang, and so uh, I believe the left well one one side is yin, one side. I'm not a pranayama prana expert, so by any means, but I researched it at one point and did it for some time. But uh, it uh, by doing that you can balance out your yin and yang by by focusing that, and you start off by holding the one nostril and you're breathing in and then after a while you learn to be able to control which nostril you're breathing from right and, i mean i've been doing vivekananda's where you you hold the left nostril you breathe in four through the right you hold for 16 and breathe out eight through the left okay he says if you do that you'll get a beautiful voice i'll let you know Ask me a year from now. I'll see you, you already have now. a beautiful voice. So uh, <laughs> you, you, without doing any running, you don't need to fix it. You don't need to fix it. <laughs> you, you have a resonant, mellifluous voice. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work on our duet, Jonathan, for the next time. Uh, <laughs> Great. I didn't pick all of Yeah, yeah. And the, the Shushumna corresponds to the penetrating vessel in Chinese medicine. And um, so it it connects up the uh, the Bai Hui with the uh, uh, with the Hui Yin and at that you know at the intersection of your legs there. And but in uh, the Chinese medicine it also extends down through the kidney channels down to the bottoms of your feet. So you get this 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 thing. So it's a but that's that's another conversation and we don't have time for that right now so <laughs> but there is there it it's one of these fascinating topics that just keeps going deeper and deeper and the more we can integrate it into the body mind so that we're living it rather than just thinking about it 
the better, mm -hmm. I think, that uh, it enables us to to then whatever I'm doing, you know, if I do this, I know that if I expand and and activate that with 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 young energy, then it's going to go smoother than if I'm uh, I'm I'm doing it as a yin movement. It's just it's a it's a different different effect, and so you get to play with that. You get to control your yin and your yang, and control your movements, and and that activates that super conscious state, and and then the fun begins. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Love Maria. You, Maria.